In today's brief video, I want to discuss the very important differences between nicotine pouch products such as Zen. I want to discuss SNUS products such as General SNUS made by Swedish Match. And I also want to discuss dip products that are made by U.S. smokeless such as Skoll, Copenhagen, things that people would refer to as dipping tobacco. People will also call this chewing tobacco, although technically chewing tobacco is the stuff that you put in your cheek and you chew. Dipping tobacco is what you put in between your lip and your gums in either a pouch or a long cut or a fine cut form. In today's video, the goal is going to be to explain the benefits of these products, the harms of these products, the dangers of these products compared to smoking or vaping, a potential risk for harm reduction, and then provide you with information on quitting these products. One of the last things in today's video I'm going to review is a nicotine-free, tobacco-free dip product. We're going to talk about the dangers of that and the potential benefits. Now, if you're new to my channel, my name is Dr. Frank. I'm the founder of Addiction Mindset Recovery Coaching Programs, where we help people quit nicotine, THC, energy drinks, and adult media content, substances I was once addicted to. If you wind up enjoying today's video, be sure to check out our free seven-step guide on how to quit nicotine. It's free for immediate download in the pinned comment or the video description link. Let's start with talking about the differences between Zin nicotine pouches and a product like Velo nicotine pouches, okay? We're going to start with Zin because this is very popular. So Zin is a nicotine pouch that uses pharmaceutical grade nicotine, okay? So it's produced and made in a lab. It's a very, very stable form of nicotine, nicotine salts. Now, if we look at a product like Velo, which is, or Velo, however you pronounce it, people think they're the same thing, but they're not. The nicotine in these pouches are actually derived from the tobacco plant. So although this product is free of tobacco leaves, this is not a tobacco-free product, technically, because the nicotine is derived from the tobacco plant. Pharmaceutical grade nicotine, tobacco plant derived nicotine. Now, the nicotine that they use is actually quite important when it comes to these products. A product like Zin, whether it's three milligram or six milligram portions, that nicotine salt is going to be absorbed very quickly into your bloodstream and it's going to exit your bloodstream equally as quick. Whereas nicotine derived from the tobacco plant, not pharmaceutical grade nicotine salts, is going to have a slower rate of absorption and a bit slower rate of excretion from the body. So it hangs around in your system a little longer. Now, there can be benefit to that because that means that you're not going to go through as frequent bouts of withdrawals. If you're addicted to a product like Zen, it's frequent that you're going to find yourself going into a state of agitation and craving and withdrawals because those nicotine salts enter and exit our body so rapidly. This is a very similar discussion when it comes to vaping. A lot of the disposable vapes are nicotine salts. A lot of the mod units are free-based nicotine, traditionally what you would find and let's say like the use of a cigarette or something like that. The nicotine salts and the disposables, people tend to burn through that much quicker because of the high rate of absorption and the high rate of excretion. So that's the first thing just to take note of when it comes to these two different products because there is a difference. Now another difference, when you look at a product like Zen, which is made by Swedish Match, which is a fairly, in the world of tobacco, respectable tobacco company, okay, they give you uh, their ingredients. If you go on their website, you can readily see what's within this product. Now, one of the ingredients that I want to point out, which we're also going to talk about, is found in the flavored General Snus products, is something called Ace K or Aspartame. Now, a lot of people are going to jump down my throat on this and say, there's not human studies proving that it's bad for you. Okay, there's also not human studies proving that the absorption through of aspartame through the mucosal tissue in your gums, okay, which bypasses your liver and your GI tract is safe. 
In fact, I would argue what we already know about aspartame as an artificial sweetener, which it's generally accepted now, even with the not mass amounts of human studies, that it can cause headaches, dizziness, forgetfulness, memory problems, skin problems, stomach problems. Uh, even there's been links to cancer. If you just go on Reddit, and read about side effects from, from you know, dipping uh, Zen, okay, or snoozing or whatever you want to say, Zen products, you'll see a whole host of strange side effects that you'll read on through the forms that just don't make sense. And we often see this. A lot of people who use this product that were helping quit, they're suffering from just weird health stuff, very weird health stuff. And that might be attributed to the nicotine and they're having a bad reaction. It might be attributed to that artificial sweetener, ACE-K, which, mind you, is bypassing the liver and the digestive system. It's, or I'm sorry, your digestive system. It's going directly into your bloodstream to then get filtered through your liver and your kidneys. So I would imagine if there's negative side effects, they're enhanced by not di- by not passing through our digestive system. So just something to consider about this product. As far as I'm concerned, Velo, I believe from what I understand, they use sucralose, which is also an artificial sweetener, but doesn't seem to have the harsh side effect profile that ACE-K or aspartame does for some people. Some people as well, too, it's worth mentioning, have a very hard time breaking down aspartame and may truly have some really negative side effects from it. So something to keep in mind, okay? Before I continue this discussion and we get into dipping tobacco and snus products and the differences in those, I want to point out that the the worst side effect of this is addiction. Uh, as Dr. Andrew Huberman beautifully put it, addiction is the progressive narrowing of things in life that bring us joy. Lots of our joy in life comes from dopamine production and our reward and motivation pathways in our brain. All of these products, once addiction is present, is going to negatively affect dopamine function. In fact, with abuse of any nicotine product, it's going to result in a deficit of dopamine over time. So addiction and the consequences of addiction that it has on our health, on our relationships, on our finances, on our drive, on our motivation, and on our brain function should be the primary focal point of concern for anyone who's considering quitting these products or for anyone who's considering starting to use these products. Although we are going to talk about benefits of these products shortly, I think that's very important to emphasize. On top of the fact that each of these products is also going to negatively impact endothelial health or vascular tissue and blood flow. It can damage our joints. It reduces blood flow to our brain. It reduces blood flow to our genitalia, right? Penis, vagina, whatever it is you have. So all of these things are worth consideration if you're getting into these products. Now, I want to talk a little bit about your general snus products. So this company is Swedish Match, which also makes Zen, okay? Again, a, a respectable tobacco company, okay? Now, snus is popular, snus is popular, because in Sweden, a lot of people use it. And in Sweden, they have pretty low rates of oral cancers and other health complications that you would typically see with a tobacco product like a cigarette. Now, this is important because Swedish Match has applied back in 2019 to become a modified risk tobacco product. They are allowed to claim with their their products, their snus products, that that they you are that you are at a lower risk of mouth cancer, heart disease, lung cancer, stroke, emphysema, and chronic bronchitis. Now, I think some of those lung conditions like bronchitis and emphysema and lung cancer, no surprise that you're at a lower risk for those when you're using a dip product or a snus product. But what some people may be surprised to find out is that you're also at a lower risk compared to smoking for oral cancers and mouth cancers and heart disease, okay? The reason for this has largely to do with the fact at how this product is produced, okay? And we're going to talk about the production of this also compared to dipping tobacco like a skull product or a Copenhagen or something. 
Uh, this product is made through the process of steam curating the tobacco and pasteurizing it. Whereas a product like Skoll or Copenhagen is made through a process of fire curating the tobacco and fermentation. Now, the, the, that results in, in different levels of something called TSNAs or tobacco-specific nitrosamates or nitrosamines, okay? These are the little carcinogens that are linked to cancers in tobacco products, all right? These products have less of those. These products have slightly more of those. Cigarettes have tons of those, okay? So you want less tobacco-specific nitrosamines or TSNAs. General Snus has proven that through their production of tobacco, through this pasteurization and steam curing, that they have accomplished that, which is why they're allowed to make that claim as a modified risk tobacco product. So it is safe to say, if you are smoking cigarettes, this is a better option for you than smoking cigarettes. I'm not saying doing them in conjunction with one another, switching to a product like this. You can make that claim. And I, I will make that claim, and I would encourage anyone who's maybe considering that to look at the work of Dr. Brad Rodu, R-O-D-U. He wrote the book for smokers only. I linked it in the video description, okay? You can find it on Amazon for smokers only. And it's an incredible book about the harm reduction potential of dipping tobacco and snus-related products for people who are addicted to smoking. And I would argue, and I think we're going to see this eventually, that there's harm reduction potential in a product like this to vaping. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess we're going to see that in the future, and it wouldn't surprise me that if Swedish Match is going to go for that modified risk application even to vaping or to smoking with this product in the future, which they have not done yet, but I understand it takes a long time. Now, on the product of general, I do want to point this out. Their flavored products in the U.S., ironically enough, right, not so much in Europe, they contain aspartame. Okay, so if you're having weird symptoms from this, yes, it might be from the nicotine, but it might be from the ACE K. So you might want to consider utilizing an original flavor like the white portions or the original portions. Okay, just something to keep in mind. Now, let's move on. Now we have a product like this, Skull, okay? And you can get these in pouches. You can get this in long cut. You can get this in rough cut. You can get this in a SNUS product as well too, which again is going to be that pasteurization process, although I do want to emphasize right now I think Swedish Match is the only one who has that modified uh, to risk tobacco product. I know that uh, other companies like Alteria, they're in the process, I believe, still of applying for that for their Skull Snus products, okay? I don't know if they've received that, though, and I think it was actually Copenhagen that they were applying for. But anyways, this is dipping tobacco, okay? And this is made through a process of fermentation and fire curating the tobacco, which leads to slightly higher levels of TSNAs. Now, that would, in theory, increase the risk of oral cancer and other health problems. Now, I will point something out. You spit this tobacco, or at least you should. Some people, some people gut it or they swallow it. Uh, this is meant to be swallowed. You put this in your upper lip, and most people will swallow the byproducts and the saliva from it. I encourage anyone who's using any of these products to always spit. I, I, I don't know if you increase your chances of like pancreatic cancer or other cancers if you're swallowing it, but to me, it just seems like a bad idea. So I say even with a product like this or like Zen, I encourage people to spit, especially with all the weird stomach problems we see people presenting with with products like Zen. Okay, I encourage people to I encourage people to spit. Anyways. Back to skull pouches. So that and and long cut. When it comes to dipping tobacco, you have pouches and you have long cut. Long cut, generally speaking, it's accepted that it's rougher on the gums than a moist pouch. And this is very important. 
Because when we look at oral cancers or mutation of the cells in our mucosa, what's happening is repetitive damage to the same place over and over again. So I dip tobacco, I put it in my mouth in the same spot over and over and over again. Eventually, those cells are going to undergo mutations, and that may predispose or directly cause an oral cancer from that repetitive damage. The same goes for a dry pouch, maybe even more so, according to some studies, dry snus, dry dipping pouches, with the salts being more irritating than a moist product to the gum line. Something to consider, something to look into. I'm not saying that's facts, just that's what some literature is showing right now. So that's ultimately what might cause the cancer, which brings me to my next discussion. And again, look at the work of Dr. Brad Rodu for Smokers Only. He has some interesting commentary on that and the processes of oral pathologies and how those come about. So that's why they recommend no matter what product you're using that you switch the placement around in your mouth so you're not damaging the same tissue over and over and over again. And that's why all of these products do have a risk in theory of cancer. None of these things are health foods. I understand that they say in Zen, this product contains nicotine. It doesn't contain tobacco, so they don't have to put the mouth cancer. It doesn't have tobacco leaves, so they don't have to put the mouth cancer warning on there. But in theory, because of that repetitive damage, you are still increasing the risk of mouth cancer. Now, how high is that risk? No idea. It might be 1% compared to the general population. It might be 20%. It might be 0.5%. No idea. Now, that brings us to products like this. There's a lot of products on the market like Black Buffalo. This is one of them, okay? And this is nicotine-free and tobacco-free, Okay. And these are, what are these? Are these pouches? Yeah, these are pouches here. They look like your traditional dipping pouches. A lot of people are under the assumption, okay, it's nicotine free, it's tobacco free, it's 100% safe. It's safer because you're not going to get the negative side effects of nicotine, which is ultimately going to lead, result in a dopamine deficit and blood vessel constriction and, you know, possible stomach irritation and skin condition problems and headaches and withdrawals and cravings. You're not going to get all that. But you are still going to get the irritation to the gum line. And if you repetitively damage the same area over and over and over and over again, you still potentially have a risk for a disease process of mucosal or gum tissue. So these things, although safer, arguably, arguably not 100% safe. And we also want to take into consideration, are these products using ingredients like aspartame, ACE K, sucralose? How are these flavored? Now, I will say this. I've used, uh, I think it was Outlaw Dip, the tobacco-free, nicotine-free product. And I think he's changed his formula. But when I tried that, it tore up my gums. Like I was getting jaw pain from it. And I think it had to do with whatever blend he uses to mimic the tobacco blend. So that's going to be very important for you to pay attention to. Yeah, I've never opened this. If you get into using these products, okay, what are they using and how rough is that ingredient on your gum tissue going to be? Generally speaking, the moist pouches are a lot gentler on the gum line. Now, we look at all of these different products and people will say, well, what would, you, what would you recommend? If I were quitting smoking, what would you do? I, I guess I'll say this. According to government bodies and the modified risk tobacco products, I would recommend General Snus Original Formula or White Portion because those do not contain aspartame because they don't have the flavorings in them. And that is a form arguably of harm reduction, well it is, to smoking cigarettes. So that's an option for someone looking to quit cigarettes, as is Nicorette gum, as is self-hypnosis, as are nicotine patches, as are a million other things. The question becomes, why do people enjoy using products like Zen or Snus or other things like that? It has to do with the effect of nicotine. Nicotine stimulates dopamine production in the short term. Long-term abuse, it depletes it. 
Nicotine stimulates our adrenaline and norepinephrine and epinephrine pathways. So there's that burst of focus and attention. Nicotine also prevents the breakdown of acetylcholine, which in turn helps to increase the amount of acetylcholine available in the body, which can help with focus and working memory, or memory, I shouldn't say working memory, memory. Nicotine also has a relaxing effect at the same time on skeletal muscle. So people like nicotine when they need to focus and get work done. There's many other ways to mimic those same effects of nicotine through supplementation, through meditation, through exercise, through nutrition, those positive effects without the health risks of these things. Also, without the addiction, which is the worst side effect of each of these products. Even with the modified risk and harm reduction approach, which is great, Freedom from addiction is even better. That I promise you. Now, if you found this video educational and you want to learn more, our company is developing a product, a supplement that's a chew, okay, not a chewing tobacco or a dip product, a chewable that mimics the effects of nicotine, the benefits, but it doesn't contain nicotine and it doesn't contain anything addictive. Okay, well, I guess maybe slightly if it boosts dopamine, maybe that. If you want to stay tuned for that supplement, if you want to learn more about this stuff, if you found this video good, download that free seven-step guide on how to quit nicotine today and get on our email list. I don't spam you with junk. All I do is send out educational content just like you heard in this video. And of course, if we have products, if we have recommendations to help people quit, you're also going to be up to date on those things in the email as well. Now, we also offer one-on-one -on -one addiction recovery coaching when it comes to quitting using nicotine. So if you're ready to quit, which I would highly advise you do, any of these products, I would highly advise it can be life-changing quitting. I mean that. Check out our one-on-one -on -one coaching options as well or just download that free seven-step guide to quitting. I hope this video helped you guys out. I tried to keep this as educational as possible. And please, if I misspoke, if, if you have commentary on it, drop that in the comments below. I would love to hear. I'm certainly no expert when it comes to different tobacco products, but I am an expert when it comes to addiction, okay? So please, correct me if I said anything or I misspoke in the comments. I'll be looking for it. Bye now.